Hey guys, welcome back to Kerbal Space Program, where after the uh, rousing success of last episode, I have set up a whole load of different alarm clocks on the, on the, the side over there, which tells us we have over a year to wait till the Aljuna um, transfer, our next Juna transfer, which means we've got to leave that and think about our next target, which is Moho. Um, so yeah, we're going to build a small Moho probe. We're going to make it a probe because, well, it takes a lot of effort to put a Kerbal out well, in that far. And it's going to be a long-ranging mission. And to be honest, I'm not sure if I can get them back or not. So we're going to send a robot out because, you know, we're not that worried about um, a robots, uh, a robots coming back. All right, so we've got a basic structural component up to get going with. And what we want to do now is start putting on some, some uh, scanning software, scanning equipment. Um... Yeah, this is going to be our first contact with that little planet so close to the, the sun there. Uh, we want to get as much data as possible about it. And that's not just data as in the form of, like, science we can spend, but data is in just data so we know what we're looking at when we get there. I'm sure you guys know what I mean, maps and stuff like that, so that we can make, our, make informed decisions about what we're going to do when we get there with actual Kerbals. Because uh, we will be sending Kerbals to every planet. Uh, that is my, my long-term goal here. But first, we're going to send robots to every planet because robots rule the world. Or perhaps even the solar system. But anyway, with all that mapping, so uh, mapping systems done, it's time to move on to the actual science. Uh, the science that we can bring back and trade in for better bits, because that is what this is all about. Or at least this is what I feel it's all about. Uh, so we've put the materials bay on the bottom and we stuck the goo canister on the side. And I'm about to spend a very, very long time trying to find stuff that will uh, balance out. Because the goo canister is, uh, as you see there, uh, 0 0.15. Uh, metric tons or whatever it is they measure this in. I like to think that it's metric tons because, you know, that's what the rest of the world works in, but I'm fairly sure it's probably imperial tons. Who knows? We'll find out. So, yeah. I'd spend an awful long time trying to figure out if I can use any sort of solar panels or anything like that to uh, balance out the, the uh, goo canister on the side there. Um, I even toy with the idea of moving the goo canister somewhere else and putting these massive solar panels uh, either side of it. Uh, I'd settle on putting the, the, the solar panels down there. The reason we need such large solar panels is because we've got an awful lot of science to do, um, scanning wise and actual real science. So we're going to need, well, just going to need an awful lot of power. And I, the one thing I don't want to do is run out of power when I'm in orbit around Moho. Um, I will be incredibly close to the sun, which means any solar power that does come in is useful, um, incredibly high power. But it is also like a small panel is a small panel and you won't get much power from that no matter what you do. Uh, still searching around at the moment trying to find things that do balance it out. Um, in the end I decided to go for a uh, composite of, of many items. Uh, and in fact I think we might jump ahead to see the different things that I have used. Pow! In with a winch! Um, mainly because it was the item that I could find that was the closest to the 1 .5, uh, 0 0.15 um, weight limit. Uh, it came in at something like 0 0.13, which with all the other sciences that I had to throw on there, the gravioli detector and stuff like that, actually ended up being a, a very well balanced machine. Um, also highly functional. I'm not sure what I'm going to end up using the actual winch for. Um, I'm, I'm hoping that it will actually be useful when it comes to uh, trying to get the science back. I should be able to send a ship out to meet its orbit when it's flying past and then use the, whip, uh, the winch to connect the two and then use just like pure mechanical grunt force to get their um, delta V's matched and hopefully not have ridiculous explosions in space and lose all our science. Maybe. Um, I don't know, who knows. So you can see the, the tight setup that I'm using there. Um, everything's packed into quite a, quite a small area. Uh, I quite like designs of ships like this where everything is just kind of there where I need it. It does occasionally lead to me not being able to activate stuff. And now that I think about it, 
I've not set up any action groups for the scanning software, uh, scanning systems. I don't know why I keep wanting to try call them software. I suppose technically they are software. Everything in this game software. Um, but yeah, the, the, the scanning system, cause the, the multi-spectral scanner right there is notoriously difficult to be able to click on when you're in orbit. And that's, I, I just like to be able to have a, um, a, an action group set up so I could just click a single button, well, press a single button and everything's all right. I'm not sure if there is a way of going in and and um, fixing that sort of, you know, cheaty style in the in the the the, the, the save the persistent save file. Um, I don't know. I'll go have a look at that at some point. Right. So we now are trying to put on one of the most important, or possibly one of the most important um, pieces of equipment, the communicatron. Uh, the reason I feel this is so important is because if you were watching last episode. I managed to send out a probe without any way of communicating the science back to uh, the Kerbal Space Center and that is indeed why we're doing this today and not sending out the Curiosity Probe because we don't have the science to build the stuff that I want to build to make the curiosi Curiosity Probe work. So the probe is almost all but complete. Uh, the only thing we really need to do now at this point is send some, uh, put some sort of control system on it. Because whilst we're going to send up like a massive launcher with it and all, all these other rockets and stuff like that to get it out to Moho, when we are in the Moho area, it is on its own. Um, I, we're, we're not going to be taking like orange fuel cells and main cells with us. Um, we're just going to take this tiny fuel tank here and try and find the most efficient engines. Now, I used to think it was these ant ones, but looking at the ISPs, turns out it's actually the tiny rocker maxes. So, um, yeah, we're just going to grab a whole load of these and stick four around the bottom in some sort of pleasing symmetrical pattern. Because, hey, we're playing Kerbal Space Program and it's all about pleasing symmetrical patterns. Right, and that is the probe done. Um, I'm not happy with the name, I'll be honest. The Moho Diver is a bit uninspired. Uh, if anyone has any ideas to, to, to rename this to something a bit more epic, uh, let me know. Um, yeah, anyway, so yeah, with the ship all but done, all we have to do now is uh, drop a sub-assembly on the bottom, which we are going to jump to right now look at it isn't it beautiful um there are a few weird things with it when i when i ported it in um so some of the the structural supports at the top there ended up going through um through fuel tanks and stuff like that but i'm sure nothing bad will come at that <coughs> foreshadowing of future events and with a minimal of mucking about just making sure everything is how i want it to be we're gonna jump out to the launch pad and here we are, sat with all the poise and elegance of an unexploded bomb, and with some dodgy staging, we're ready to t uh, take off and launch ourselves up into a parking orbit. Um, as I say, we, we've got like 40 odd days before we're actually going to reach our, um, our transition window, but I like to have all my probes on standby because I'm terrible for going off and doing other things and then missing my transfer window by like a day because I was off doing something else and then I had to launch it and then get it in the right place and then fire up and boost my way and, and yeah, just times are right. Hi Flemmy, nice to see you again. Um, he kept on popping up and saying hello during this, uh, this recording session. I now, however, have figured out how to turn that off, so hopefully that will never happen again. Right, so we're on our way to the second staging and this is where something horrendous happens. I just lose two of my fuel tanks. Now, normally this wouldn't be too much of an issue. You'd be like, okay, two, two fuel tanks, that, that's, that's not too, too much trouble. I've overestimated, I can just get up into orbit anyway. The problem is, these are the two that drain into the middle when it comes to the asparagusing. So that's like the last set to be thrown away, which means that my oh so careful, carefully set up uh, staging um, suddenly doesn't quite work as I need it to. You'll notice that we're already halfway through that fuel tank in the middle with the mainsail and the two engines on the outside have fuel tank have full tanks. Um, which isn't great because the mainsail is a mainsail and it burns through like X thousand litres per second and the outside two are just skippers um, and, and they don't burn through X thousand litres per second. So I need to do some, um, some engine management on our way around here. Uh, I, I, I go for various, uh, various strategies. The first one we've got here is I turn my mainsail down to half power. Um, this doesn't actually appear to have done me much good. Uh, I'm spending some time 
looking around um, and I finally decided that yeah no that's not, that's not good enough but these two engines around the outside they might be good enough on their own so I shut down the main sail and we're just going to burn through this fuel to get us up into orbit um, I have obviously as a standard parking orbit we're looking for it to be somewhere between the atmosphere and 100 kilometers just so we can take care or what's well, just so we can take advantage of this um, magnificent oberth effect that everyone keeps going on about and if you go and look at the maps it actually makes like perfect sense but there we go if you don't know what I'm talking about uh, in a nutshell the faster you're going the better uh, velocity boost you will get when out of a rocket engine um, it's all for like ridiculous like mathematical reasons but it basically boils down to the lower your orbit the higher efficiency burn you can make so bear that in mind when you're setting up your uh, parking orbits guys you basically just want to be grazing the atmosphere without actually plowing into the atmosphere and uh, causing yourself a mischief so we seem to be uh, almost perfectly set up on a nice equatorial orbit here. Uh, we've not got a perfectly circular orbit, but that's all right. I can, I can deal with not a perfectly circular orbit. Things have already gone wrong in this, uh, this flight, so um, things aren't going to go exactly perfectly. So at the moment, I'm sending, spending some time um, moving my fuels around, uh, moving everything into the middle, basically, so we can think about getting rid of the, uh, this outside stage. It should have been done in flight. Um, unfortunately, it's not going to be done in flight because, you know, things went wrong. Uh, so yeah, we pumped everything into the middle, and now I've got these two fuel tanks to worry about. Um, now, normally there wouldn't be too much of an issue. i would just dump them where they are. But I am leaving this up here for like, you know, 40 odd days, which means that's all sorts of times, that, uh, all sorts of opportunities for nasty, nasty collisions with anything that I leave just kind of scudding around up here. So we need to deal with it. And we're going to deal with it by going around our orbit as far as we can be bothered. We should really get as close to the Apple apps as we can. But, you know, we'll just turn until at this point here where my uh, my nose is pointing towards my retrograde uh, we'll burn down um, to put our periaps into um, the atmosphere and drop these away then we need to try and turn our rocket round which it's not as easy as it sounds this is a hulking great big craft and the only reaction wheel that we've got on here is the one on, on the probe up there so it's time to bust out some trickery. Uh, holding down the Alt key and using my time accelerate buttons, we can actually get into the uh, physical accelerate processes. Uh, that's the, the, the time accelerate that happens when you're in the atmosphere, where it's like times one, times two, times three, and times four, uh, and where it actually just speeds everything up instead of like running the mathematics in whatever way it does when it's in um, normal time acceleration. I've never really th sat to think about what the differences between the actual processes are. I just know that one means you can turn and the other you can't. All right, so we've uh, boosted our um, periaps back up to... Well, as we can see, they're 92 kilometers. That's close enough to uh, a good 100 meter, uh, 100 kilometer orbit to me, for me to call it circular. And now we're just going to uh, watch these these spare parts come cruising in. Um, I spent an awful lot of time trying to find the right camera angle here, which is quite amusing when you think about it, because all we're doing is watching things smash into the planet. Um, so we're already grazing the, the top of the atmosphere, enough for us not to be able to accelerate time anymore. I switched to the other tank to see if we can get a better view. No, we can't. So uh, go back down to the lower one, and we're just going to watch these uh, fly down through the atmosphere, I suppose. So this leaves me with a couple of minutes to talk about our next mission, uh, the mission to EVE. Uh, that is in like 43 days time, uh, so that was, they'll be leaving very shortly after the Moho probes. Uh, and I'm not sure whether to send a probe out, as is as seems to be the, uh, the, the theme at the moment, or because it is so close, do I send some kerbals out? Um, if I send kerbals, I will not be sending them to the surface of EVE, we will just be looking at uh, EVE's moon. Perhaps to spend, set up some sort of uh, Keith A mining base. Um, yeah, well, th this is it. I don't know. Do I do I send a mining crew to Gilly or do I send probes to Eve surface? Let me know what which one you want to see, guys, um, and I will start working on that this weekend, probably. So we're starting to hit the, uh, the the heat shock zone of the atmosphere and already looking at that um, tank back there you can see the difference that it, just a hundred meters will make in the atmosphere. Uh, the drag on that, that, that uh, fuel tank back there is taking it just kilometers away from this one and they were a ship's width apart when they entered the 
entered the atmosphere. So uh, yeah, well, moral of the story, the harder the aero braking, the deeper you need to go. Ugh. But the crudeness aside, we are just about to smash this thing quite close to the space center of all things. Um, and I would like to say, Thank you very much for joining me for this uh, build and launch and crash uh, adventure. I will see you next time where we're going to work on an EVE program of some description. Uh, yeah, I'll see you then then. Bye!